Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of sports, social media, TV, film, pop culture, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. On Twitter, you know me as PD Beats. My guest is a professional hockey player currently in, in the Boston Bruins organization, played for Providence last year in the American Hockey League. We were with Zach Sanishin. Zach, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for having me, PD. No problem. We had you last time with Quinn Wickers and Brandon McCarra, but now uh, you don't have to share the spotlight with them. It's all about, it's all about Zach Sanishin this time. Yeah, I, uh, I ditched the other two, so... <laughs> I think I, I think I mentioned it to you um, last time you were on. I mean, it was, you know, a pretty big kind of stepping stone year for yourself last year in the AHL. And you had you got a chance to play two games at the end with the Boston Bruins as well. Talk a little bit about your year last year and how you can kind of move on this year. Well, I definitely think uh, last year uh, it was, I played a couple different roles for Providence. And uh, again, it was, it was about growing and kind of uh, progress, not perfection. And and really uh, making sure my game was getting better. And I think uh, in the first kind of half of the year, I was able to have a really hot start on the offensive side of things. Yep. And, um, things were moving really well for me, and I was uh, able to kind of get back to my junior days of scoring goals again and getting that confidence. And uh, it was uh, it was really great for me to kind of have that ba- have that uh, tool back in my bag. And uh, as things moved on during the season, I ended up playing more of a defensive role and uh, ended up playing on lower on the lines. And, learn how to PK and really uh, make sure to take care of my own end. And uh, at the end of the day, that kind of got me uh, an opportunity in the last kind of two games with uh, with the Boston Bruins. And I was able to go up there and play with uh, Marcus Johansson and Charlie Coyle and be able to log some pretty good minutes and be able to kind of get that confidence, see what the NHL is all about and what it will take for me to do this year. It's interesting you say about – kind of adapting to different roles in Providence because what I'm noticing about the National Hockey League is players have to kind of adapt to different roles that they might not be comfortable with. They might be used to kind of being that that goal scorer in junior, but maybe you got to play the third line uh, minutes and the, the PK role and the grinding role. Do, is it safe to say that the National Hockey League is kind of, for people that want to become mainstays in the NHL, you kind of have to adapt to play to, to certain situations where it might not be comfortable for all of you right away because you're used to a different style? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, obviously there's certain players that don't have to change your game, like your Connor McDavid's and your your exceptional players. But for the for the most part, everyone has to adapt and everyone has to be able to roll with the punches and be able to reinvent their game at some point. So uh, again, talking with guys that have been through the AHL and been through the uh, the, the grind of it, and uh, again, you need to find ways to be successful and to help your team win. At the end of the day, it's it's what it's all about, and it's what will get you more minutes and it's what will help you along the way. What was something you learned last year the most in terms of, you know, the development of your game and kind of experiencing, you know, big minutes in Providence, adapting to those roles, but also playing in the National Hockey League? What kind of takeaways were there for Zach Sanishin? Um, I definitely think watching the older guys and being able to go on that cup run and uh, learn a lot from uh, black acing and stuff like that was incredible. But uh, I'd say the biggest takeaway was doing the, the small things and the easy things uh, amazing every day and just really making sure you're, you're making those tape to tape passes. And again, you're, you're holding on to pucks. You're not turning over, turning over. It's great to make that great uh, grand highlight reel play. But at the end of the day, it's all about kind of making those base hits and really just, kind of slowly chipping away at the game and wearing them down. For your first National Hockey League goal being an empty netter, right? Yeah, yeah. I have to mention that. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you, you, no. Set, you set me up for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, again, you know, you, you, I was able to play some really good D that uh, over the course of the year, and they put me out when uh, with the extra attacker out there and is able to, to get that one. But uh, I still, uh, I'm still a little nervous when I see that empty net. Sure. Hey man, you scored a goal in the National Hockey League. I don't think a lot of yeah, people get to worry, say I, that, man. I take them uh, anyway I can get them for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I asked you this last time, but uh, who is Zach Sedition on the ice and who is Zach Sedition off the ice? 
Um, on the ice, again, I play with a lot of speed, and uh, I'm a goal scorer, and uh, I want to score goals, and I want to be offensive. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really excited for this upcoming year. I've put in a lot of work, and I've uh, adapted my game a lot. I've really, uh, I've really grown as a player over the last two years, and I'm excited for uh, the coaches and the management to really see uh, the work I put in this summer. And uh, off the ice, I'm uh, just kind of a goofball, to be honest. I uh, just love ha having fun with my buddies and, again, spending lots of time with my family. That's where I'm, I'm flying uh, back to Ottawa to see them. And, again, we love to, uh, we love to play lots of games, play cards, and just uh, spend lots of time with each other. No, absolutely. Kind of staying on the kind of off ice and on ice. I just I want to know because you know you're a professional hockey player. You're, you're training in the off season, and you were in Boston for a good amount of the summer as well. Um, what are some trends in the National Hockey League in terms of you know on the ice and training, um, and then kind of off the ice in terms of like is there a specific kind of drink everyone's drinking? Is there like a new like what are some trends that you're kind of noticing? Is there a dip like you know you know what I mean like a, like a all nice could be like mm -hmm. people are really into crossfit or you know what i mean like all yeah. the ice people are really into like we know they're in the spike ball but maybe they're into pumpkin spice lattes i don't know is there anything you're noticing <laughs> definitely not the pumpkin spice lattes. I haven't, I haven't seen any of those i won't uh but uh definitely on ice like uh, again the game's moving towards speed we're uh in off ice too you know we're we're really focusing on being explosive and and really uh, being able to be fast and being able to recover and do it again and again and kind of roll throughout that game. And uh, th that's been my whole goal is kind of be explosive, be faster, and, again, being able to do it on a consistent basis. So, I, again, we're, we're really focused on our conditioning, but uh, one thing everyone knows about the Boston Bruins is that uh, we work extremely, extremely hard. So uh, it, uh, it's awesome to see, and it's awesome to have those guys in that locker room to push each other as well. You mentioned, you know, off the ice being, you know, a goofball, a fun guy to be around. And that's sometimes something that um, hockey players don't get credit for. There's a little bit of kind of like a stigma that hockey players, they just do hockey all the time. They don't really have a personality. But how, how so how important is that for you kind of to kind of break the silence and be like, hey, hockey players are personalities, man. They exist. Oh. I'm right here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that uh, all the all of my buddies on my team, my my good friends, like they're all they're all pretty goofy. And like again, we like to go out and do some fun stuff. Like last night, me and Jeremy Lozon, we were at a comedy show, and we're again like to do stuff like that. And uh, again, get out and learn new things. And again, we're we're cooped up in the rink all the time. So we have such a beautiful city in Boston too. So it's nice to get out there and do do different things and kind of. Uh, expand our horizons a little bit that guy has big time me for the podcast for probably like four years now man <laughs> I, I i man i've known him since the days when i interned at the quebec major junior hockey league so me and los all go way back and it always like yeah we'll make it happen we'll make it happen but it just never happens <laughs> oh he's a busy guy he's a busy guy but i'm gonna definitely gonna have to give him a hard time for that but for sure um you know it's funny because I, I do want to mention it because, you know, you are you're from Ottawa. You're coming back home to see some family for the long weekend. Ottawa and like the areas around Ottawa, the Eastern Ontario, but also the Valley. We're seeing a lot of hockey players being developed from that area, Zach. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, definitely uh, before it was more Toronto based and uh, stuff like that. But I think definitely I'm really, really proud to be from Ottawa and how good our hockey players are from there. And uh, it's always nice to to see those guys coming up and uh, definitely uh, it's, it's been awesome to grow with uh, the guys my age and see all the amazing things that uh, the guys from Ottawa have been able to do. But uh, definitely it's been nice to, uh, to, to look forward and look, to see the future again. I think tomorrow I'm going to go see my cousin go play at the, at the showcase at the Senseplex. So again, it's, uh, it's exciting. But I find it funny, too, because, you know, it's becoming kind of a little bit of like a hotbed for training, too, because I know that some people that don't live in Ottawa have been training here over the over the summer. Like Ryan Johnston's from Sudbury playing for the Marlies. He's been over here. One year, Nick Hag, who played for Mississauga, Vegas Golden Knights prospect, he was here over the summer. So there's something brewing in Ottawa with hockey, man. I definitely think that uh, our, our training and our uh, on ice has been uh, definitely – going up and up and up again I, i've been training with chris schwarz for uh, a long time and uh jeremy benoit who's now the belleville senators uh trainer but even like we have new guys coming up like aaron gartner who, who i was training with this year and 
again, awesome, awesome off ice. But again, they give you all the tools you need on the ice as well. They get you those sessions. They get you that that time. And we have great on on ice skill development as well. So it's uh, it's great to see. And uh, uh, definitely, I'm, I'm very proud to be from Ottawa and uh, to have that uh, have guys come to your city to train. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for the future as well. You mentioned that you're gonna come. You're gonna watch your cousin play at the the showcase, the the U18, and I find, um, you know, it's not, it's 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 never too early to talk about, you know, NHL drafts. And like, you know, when it was your draft year, I'm sure kind of the the talk like started way before this your junior season started, right? So like, you're gonna snap our fingers. These kids are gonna start their OHL, um, their OHL seasons, and boom, they're gonna talk about it. You know what I mean? Do you kind of like, do you think that, be, like, because how, like, the buzz will always be, like, I was talking to Jack Quinn about it, it's his draft year, it's already started, he's seeing things online. Was that hard for you, kind of, the block out? Because I'm sure, like, right away, it just started. You didn't even start with Sault Ste. Marie, people were talking about the draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, again, I think uh, it was a little bit different for me, again. My my goal, my whole, like, life at that point was to get drafted to the NHL, to to be able to win a Stanley cup, to be able to do these things. And, um, but, but again, when I first was playing in my draft year, my, the opening day of my draft year, I wasn't on any draft rankings. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, thought of as a player that would be drafted, let alone go in the first round. So again, I think, uh, it definitely took a little bit of the pressure off me, not, not being on any of those draft rankings, but, uh, definitely it's hard not to think about, especially when you get closer and, you get into the playoffs and you definitely want to play big. But I think the, the biggest advice I'd give to those kids in their draft years, focus on your team, focus on your friends and focus on winning. I think uh, that's one thing that you guys all as teammates can, uh, can go through together is that the, the more you win with your, with your brothers, again, the, the more it's going to do great for everyone, not only the guys in their draft year. You specifically worked very, very hard um, to get where you are to be drafted in the first round. And it's we've talked about this in person, you know what I mean? Um, you know, you going in the first round. Some people on social media were saying, you know, it was an off-the-board pick type thing. Did you use that as kind of, like, motivation, like, right away? Like, I feel like right away you just, like, boom, it's it's on. You know what I mean? Oh, no, still to this day, I think uh, <laughs> that, number, that number will always follow me. And... Uh, <laughs> It's about uh, using it as a, as fuel, right? And uh, don't don't dwell on it, and don't uh, because at the end of the day, the draft is done, and it's been years and years since then. So again, you want to use it as fuel, but uh, at the end of the day, it's been it's been a long time since since the draft, and we're just focusing on helping the Bruins win. No, oh, absolutely. What does Zach Sinishin need to do to make the Boston Bruins this upcoming season? I definitely I need to uh, just hold on to pucks and I need to show I'm, a, I'm able to be really strong in my defensive zone and be able to get, get out of there and play, essentially just play in the offensive zone and really uh, be able to be that uh, fast and explosive offensive talent when it's uh, available. But again, don't try to uh, extend myself and really uh, play within my own game. Absolutely. Well, Zach, we'll wrap up, but thank you so much for coming back on Pop Turner, man. I know you're a busy guy. It was a big, it was a big summer for you. I know you people see, you know, all the hard work you put in. So, you know what, man, we're all, we're all rooting for you. And we, we hope you have a good start in training camp and uh, we hope it's a good year for you, man. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on, P. No problem. Where can people follow you on social media? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at, uh, at Zach Senishin, uh, or Twitter, same handle. You don't even check your Twitter. I know, I never check. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. You had, to, you had to expose me already, eh? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Started, uh, no one's going to follow me on Twitter now. You already... Maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll edit it out. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, no, seriously, man, all the best. Um, well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Zach Sedition and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.